people that are projecting themselves on us. They walk around our house, they come against us, they lay on our, on our uh, chest at night. How do we fight that? Uh, well, I would call it ritual warfare. Ritual warfare, what is that? Where, and then there's another level, put something on an object with, a, with, a, with an assignment. Some can say it is a curse. Give the gift to David. Okay, so let on. me go back to the blood. Should we mention the blood yeah. when we're doing this, uh, or do we just stand on it in our mind? Yeah. When they infiltrate churches, they want to lay hand on somebody. Right. They want to speak in counterfeit tongues. Wow. They want to release demons. No. We, he didn't even touch demonized people. He just commanded them. You're right. He uh, we're talking to Russ Dizdar on astral projection of how many Christians now have actually, uh, they're practicing it, and they're calling it a part of Christianity. Sure. It's kind of like an add-on to sure. Christianity. It's very dangerous, Russ. Very, very and um, my question is, uh, coming against these demons, these, these people that are projecting themselves on us, they walk around our house, they come against us, they lay on our, on our uh, chest at night, how do we fight that? Okay, so I know you said in the name of Jesus, I say in the name of Jesus, but what does the blood of Jesus have to do with any of this? Well, that's the basis. I mean, the cross, like in first in Colossians 2.15, okay. he triumphs over the dark powers by the cross. He exposes him, triumphs. So the, the, while Jesus himself, the blood of Jesus, the cross, inseparable. Okay. So it's the ground of his victory. Okay. Uh, we're told in Revelation 12, when the full force of Satan, the dragon, comes, um, believers overcome him by the word of their testimony, the blood of the Lamb. So in authority, though, no, we, we could say blood of the Lamb, but the, the true thing about authority is we've been given authority. It comes by oral command every okay. time. Now, here's what I do. If I feel something coming to the house or around me or... I, and you get used to it after a while when you're into it a lot, okay? <laughs> yeah, or, since I've been interviewing yeah. you, I've had a lot of it around. Thank you very you much. Because so, they, they will see, I'm, yeah. I'm being, they yeah. will see things like this. Yeah. And those who are practitioners, they'll want to come and engage you. Right. They'll want to summon right. and send. Right. And, and so you'll, you'll experience new levels of warfare. Good news is everything we have far superior if we use it. Yeah. So the first thing is if you feel something coming or something happening, I always do this way. Lord, because we have the Spirit of God, right. uh, omniscient, He knows everything. Okay. What is this? What's going on? So I'll pray that, and okay. immediately I'll begin to want to come against anything. Okay. But I'll, I'll, I'll always want to know what's going on, and how far, because we have the Spirit of God to, to give us a strategy in targeting prayer. So I'll rebuke the demonic, command it to be broken and bound, and get out of here. Okay. Clear the air. Right. As I call it, clear the air. Okay. Until I feel the power of the Holy Spirit only. So, so first thing is to ask, go to God, ask the question, please reveal to me, because we have the mind of Christ, sure, sure. right? So through our mind, sure. God will reveal. Yeah. And then now you're at that point, he reveals it is demonic, yeah. and then you do what? Then I would rebuke, I would command, I would, in the name of Jesus, of okay. Nazareth, get out of here. Okay. I command any presence of, the, of any demonic power in enabling people to come, if I feel it's astral. Okay. We bind you, we command your power to be broken. Okay. I ask then the Lord, if it's astral projection or, or ritual warfare, somebody sent a demon. I've, that's like oh. sudden. That's, that's a different experience. Oh, okay, so let me, let me dissect this. Yeah. Astral uh, warfare, astral project is when they, they, they project their demonic uh, influence out on someone. But then you have another <coughs> category you just mentioned. Sure. And that's what? Well, I would call it ritual warfare. Ritual warfare. What is that? Where, when somebody at a, at a coven or somewhere else at a meeting or somewhere, Heaven. they conjure. They conjure yeah. with an assignment. Go get David. Okay. Do this to David. Okay. And then there's another level. Put something on an object with a with a with an assignment. Some can say it, it's a curse. Give the gift to David. Put it wow. in your house, David. So wow. it begins to affect you. Wow. So when you're that's the one the the half the battle is be aware. We should be. If anybody okay. should be, we as believers can be aware. Okay. So we're aware of that in the name of Jesus, you know. So whatever level, on an object, demon stuff, whatever level, you are going to say, in the name of Jesus, I command you get out of here. Okay. Leave. Okay. Jesus used the word ek balo. That be just a strong command. Get out of here. Okay, so let me go back to the blood. Should we mention the blood yeah. when we're doing this, uh, or do we just stand on it in our mind? How, yeah. How do, 
bottom line is we stand out in our heart and mind. We, okay. we're, just, we're covered in the blood. We live, we, you know, we, we're, we're walking, uh, okay. cleansed. Uh, so you notice in Scripture, Jesus, the apostles, all through Acts, nobody ever said it. Nobody said it. Right. You don't have to say it. Okay. But let me tell you, tell you also, there's nothing wrong with saying it. Right. Because it, in demons manifesting in deep, they don't want, if you quote a scripture or if you say the blood of Jesus or you say the cross, yeah. they know what that is. Right. They don't like that. Right. Just the name Jesus makes them tremble. Yeah. In the book of James, wow. they tremble. That's when you do cast them out. That's why they scream. Our authority, Luke, Luke 10, 19, the authority Jesus gave is to tread, meaning to trample, to tear up, to overcome all the power of the enemy. No matter where, no matter what avenue it comes through, if we're feeling affected, hit him up, okay. rebuke him, get out of here. If you want to sing a, if you want to sing a hymn, you can do that too. Um, <laughs> say the blood of Jesus, you, but in the name of Jesus, you order them distinctly right. Right. and tell them get out of here, don't come back. Then when I th when I feel or the Lord shows it's from an astral projector or ritual, then I'm going to ask the Lord go engage them. Wow! So so there's a difference between a demon just being around yeah. and someone that's projecting a demon or yeah. summing it up summing it up in a sure, ritual sure. because uh, uh, the projection you tell you ask the Lord to go and get them. Sure. Right. Sure. Wow. So, sure. so you don't have to say the blood of Jesus, but we need to stand yeah, on it. Sure. It needs to be in our mind, right? Yeah. yeah I want. You know, I want to say. I have. You can say the blood of Jesus all you want. It's okay. Right. It's good. Yeah. That is what we stand on. Right. But the truth is, you've been given authority. Okay. As Jesus taught. Yeah. Um, and we're to command with. Or, don't touch. You know, we. He didn't even touch demonized people. He just commanded them. You're right. He when didn't. it comes to healing. To he release power to be healing, he did. He did that. Wow! But when it came to, to demonize people, oral authority, because of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb, the cross, because of Him, right? His name, we command. So you can go to the Book of Acts and see how Paul did it with that yeah. girl that had the demon that was predicting, that was harassing them. Right. Fun. He turns around, you know, come it, out of her in the name of Jesus right. Christ, and instantly that predicting demon came out. Wow, and that's why I think we have to be careful, Russ, when someone comes up comes up to us and we don't know them and they say, would you lay hands on me and pray for me? I've laid my hands on people sometimes and I've felt demonic spirit and I've I've taken my hand off mm -hmm. and I didn't even know what you, what you just said, but now I know. Yeah. And from a distance I would say, in the name of Jesus, demon, you are gone. Exactly. That's how they conjure their spirits into sure. you, right? Voodoo priests, a bokeur, uh, any satanic ritually abused who's still serving that side right they know that they know that their way of trying to transfer is to put a hand on people wow. when they infiltrate churches they want to lay a hand on somebody right they want to speak in counterfeit tongues wow. they want to release demons wow so when we pray when we do things power goes out you know Ephesians 3 a court you know when it talks about you know, the, now unto him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all we ask or imagine, yeah. according to his power that's at work within us. Right. Literally, power does go out of us as we pray like that. Wow. And that's why we must be careful when someone comes up and says, can I lay hands on you? And we don't know who they are. Yeah. Or yeah. they ask you to lay your hands on them. Yeah. Somewhere they're trying to transfer that sure. power. Sure. We need to distance ourselves when we command the demon yeah. to go, yeah. yeah. If you have a discernment of uh, there's some demonic here, yeah, you don't, yeah, you don't right. need to do that and, and uh, touch them and and so just I always say react quickly, okay. take charge right. and and uh, whatever you feel, whether in the middle of the night, during the day, in a conference, someone comes up. We had a couple uh, infiltrators here. I know, I okay. saw them. Did you see them in the audience when we were on stage last night? Mm -hmm. There's, it, the, yeah, and and, I, and they they see I, they they see themselves as war the new warriors, right, right, and yeah. um, they want to come up against us, yeah. and they've been infiltrating. We track the infiltration beginnings uh, of really trained individuals, yeah. organized in the '70s to go in, wow. like maybe PTL and help bring it down with a girl. Wow, that's another story. Well, yeah, so to sum this up. We stand on the blood. We have it in Absolutely. our mind. We come against demonic activity, standing on the blood. We can say it. We don't have Absolutely. to say it, 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 the yeah. blood of Jesus. Yeah. 
But if we say it, they don't like to hear it, right? No, they don't like to hear it. Because sometimes in, in ministry, I'll see somebody say, the blood of Jesus, the blood, and they'll just repeat it 10 times. Right. Well, that's okay, yeah. but, but, the, but the authority has been put into us, given to us. Wow. And Jesus taught just to order them. They submit to us in his name by ordering, commanding, and issuing that. So, and I've seen before where some folks, they won't even order the demon yet. They'll just start saying, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, uh, or start reading scripture, which gives the demon more time to throw the person down, to do harm, to do other things. Demons can call on other demons to come right. and help them. Right. So take charge, order, stop, command them. Um, say, the, say the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. That's that's the basis, right? But it is only oral authority we've been given by Jesus. That's right. That, that actually does it. Wow, Russ, thank you so much. Absolutely. I appreciate it. We've been talking about demon warfare in these days to come. This is what we're up against, folks. It's not, it's not what people think it is. It's on a spiritual realm. We've been talking about astral projection. We've been uh, Russ has revealed some things to me that uh, that is mind-boggling, and if we don't step up to the plate and understand how to come against demon warfare, That's right. we're going to be a lost, lost right. tribe. Sure. All right. Sure. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you.